Hello and welcome to Japan Expert Insights and our Business Insights Forum. Every Thursday, Tim Sullivan and I, Mai Matsuoka, lead a discussion looking for insights, developments, and new opportunities for the business in Japan. In this podcast, we welcome comments, questions, and opinions. So if you haven't done so yet, join us next time. In the meantime, you can find us at japanexpertinsights.com and our YouTube channel, where we upload all the conversations on Japanese politics, business insights, and the role of Japan in the Indo-Pacific region. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. We're uh, going to have more people coming uh, to the room a little bit later. Today we've got uh, Doc Kane. Uh, well, this is his first time in our room, his first time on Clubhouse as well. But uh, Doc is a very special guest because, uh, well, he moved to Japan just recently. No? Five years ago. Five years ago. <laughs> oh, no, that's that seems too... like just yesterday. <laughs> it <Right>. does. <laughs> okay, five years ago, and uh, Doc is uh, actually he has set up uh, his own business, and he and his wife are working uh, on this. It has uh, grown. It has been growing steadily. So today we're going to hear the story, and uh, well, it's I believe that the the accent will be mostly about building a business around books in Japan. Something which is not really easy because we live in the digital um, world more and more nowadays. However, so Doc, I am very curious to hear your story. And of course, after we finish, we're going to have a conversation here. So thank you for that. And without any further delay, let's start. Mm, sure, thanks. Yeah, so uh, I'm a pretty new transplant to Japan. It does feel like I just got started, but I've been here for five years. I came initially... Uh, as a tourist for like, I think it was maybe my third visit to Japan in 2017. And I came uh, to see a Paul McCartney concert and I had like a lot of um, airline miles uh, stacked up. And I was just thinking about Paul McCartney one night in uh, Illinois and decided to have a look online and saw he was going to be in Tokyo. And I figured out oh, what the hell I go to Tokyo for 10 days and, uh, and see Paul McCartney. <laughs> and, um, when I was here, I had this really lovely experience on the train where I kind of gave up my seat to an older couple and they they thanked me. And then uh, as I was going to get off the train, they gave me a, a, a kind of second nod and, and thanked me. And it really made a, an impression on me. And I, um, I thought, like, why the hell doesn't everybody do this? And it certainly wasn't happening on the train in Chicago where I was living at the time. And uh, I just decided uh, I wanted to live here. And I had always wanted to live and work abroad, at least as an adult, I had thought about it for a long, long time. And um, <clears throat> while I was here in Tokyo, I met uh, a kid in a hostel who told me that you could come here and teach English uh, with just a college degree. And I had two degrees, so I figured that, would, that might be a good way to do it. And I had often thought about teaching abroad as well. Um, and so that's what happened. I, I um, left my job and uh, came here and I've loved it ever since. My father thought nothing would ever come of this move at 47. I moved here when I was 47. Um, but a lot has changed in my life and all for the better. So I'm glad to be here. That's basically my how the hell did you get here story. <laughs> um, what else do we want to know? And then somewhere along the line, uh, maybe. So I was teaching at an Aikaiwa for a while. That was the first thing I, I did when I was working here. And uh, as part of that gig, I got an invitation to teach at a, a salon, basically, that was being run by the Hyogo International Association. And uh, <clears throat> I went there and uh, taught with another person that I knew. And uh, along the way, or there rather, I met my wife. So my wife was help helping to kind of put this thing together. And I met her and um, she was my wife, obviously, then when I met her, but uh, <laughs> she became my wife uh, sometime after that. And we put together this little company and basically, uh, it started out as us just translating uh, Japanese literature into English. And uh, this year, we've kind of moved into a, uh, a, a little different direction. We're still translating, but we've added to the translating plate this, um, this course, basically, where we teach people uh, advanced uh, or intermediate and advanced Japanese using the literature that we translate. Uh, as kind of a, a platform to instruct them through the language. So that's been well received and uh, we're just getting started. We had our first cohort in May and um, we pulled from a mailing list that we have. We have a few hundred people on our mailing list that we've developed over the past uh, three years. And um, we've got some translators in the course, uh, people like who are aspiring to be uh, a different kind of translator. Usually they're translating manga or light novels or things of that nature. And they want to kind of 
upgrade their skills a little bit, if you will. And so we have translators in there. We have people who are maybe trying to boost their um, their chops on the JLPT, uh, or people are just interested in Japanese. Basically, it's a small group right now. I think we have like twenty people in the course at the moment, but um, it's fun. It's a, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun along the way. So that's my kind of uh, my spiel. Hopefully, I don't have to talk for an hour <laughs> without anybody else saying anything. But that's that's kind of it right there. Yeah, but how? Why did you decide, you know, to move from uh, translation uh, to the next, or to take the next step from translation up? If I can say that it is going up, of course, because it's probably just an expansion. Yeah. Which, yeah. How? How come? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, yeah, it's we haven't stopped doing translation for sure, and it's fundamental to this course uh, that we put together a program. I don't even really like to call it a course necessarily because it's it's a little different. Um, but uh, why did we decide to do it? Um, so I'm always tinkering with things. I'm a, I'm a business guy at heart. And so I always am wrestling with far too many ideas and, Hey, how can we sell this? And how can we make money on this? And, uh, this is great and all, but how can we make money on this? <laughs> and, um, uh, so I think initially the, the idea was just that it was a pinging around in my head about how do we monetize this effort that we're doing because we made books and or we make books and we sell them on Amazon, but you know, nobody's, uh, really, um, you know, making a, a, an exciting living translating old Japanese literature into English for a relatively small audience. So we needed to come up with something a little different. And the angle initially was be, was because I teach English here. We were thinking uh, maybe we could use um, the books once they had already been translated into English to teach people English. Uh, but one day my wife uh, had this crazy idea and she said, why don't we teach people Japanese instead? And uh, I'm for anything, basically. So I said, "Yeah, sure. What? Let's do that. That sounds really cool." Um, the only the only kicker being, I, I don't speak Japanese at all. <laughs> so, um, and that makes this really fun for sure. So I'm we're teaching Japanese uh, in English. You know, I can't uh, speak Japanese really that much at all, nor can I read it. But I find, uh, as we do with our translation work, that it uh, it works in, in a really unique way. So. But it was all about money, Maya. <laughs> How do we put food on the table? Yeah, that's that's the bottom line always, isn't it? So, <laughs> and the best way, well, we or whatever way we find to to, to do that is is good, I believe. If we don't kill people or steal from them, <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, our our authors did all the killing of themselves, so we don't need to do that. Yeah. Or this guy that we're translating now is Dazai, who tried a couple of times and finally succeeded. But uh, yeah, 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 money is is a good thing, and and we're still very very new at this particular venture too. So we're not making money hand over fist, but it's promising, and uh, and that's really all we can kind of count on at this point. I think. What uh, kind of people take your course? We're trying to figure out who this is really best for at this point. It's because it's early. We're uh, we have a group that's very vocal, and we we discounted our price initially to get people in as a kind of beta audience, if you will, and uh, with the idea that they would provide us with as much feedback as they could. And so we asked them a lot of questions, and we don't always. Some people are more responsive than others, and so we know kind of their deal. Um, but it seems like now the people who are really kind of pushing through the course and uh, doing like every module. So what we're, we're about a month ahead of people generally with uh, the delivery of the modules that we send out to the students. Um, and a couple of them are like right on our tail, right? So those students are really responsive and they seem to be these translators like that, like I mentioned earlier. So people who are like really into Japanese and they know, like if we're talking about relative clauses or, you know, auxiliary verbs or whatever, they know all the grammar language so that they can have a conversation about it. And they're into wanting to get really, really good at Japanese. And so uh, that's kind of probably the person that we're going to see the most of. It, it's too far advanced for early for beginners. Um, if you're really, really a hustler and you're maybe like upper, uh, you're an advanced beginner, let's say, which is probably where I am. Um, then you can really learn a lot because the 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 way we're teaching is pretty cool. It's actually so it's advanced learning, but it's taught at a level to where the, the most basic learner can understand it. And so I can learn a lot as a, a newbie because of how deep we go into explaining things and how uh, I fight and we fight together to kind of make it very 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 clear. Um, so I'm, I'm a writer by trade. I've been writing for my whole life, and my kind of specialty is making things like crystal clear. And that really helps um, when trying to learn a language. 
and my wife was a uh, studied linguistics in uh, in America. So she is like an insane word person. And so she is able to help me get really, really granular in that in that sense. And so it helps people who are really dorking out on Japanese and people who need to kind of advance things and get a little bit better. Well, that's fascinating because I can see that your positioning is really very good. Oh, because thanks. we can see, yes, I mean, we can see a lot of uh, courses on YouTube and they are free for beginners, I, be- I believe. And uh, of course, there are also a lot of schools here in Japan where volunteers teach, um, you know, foreigners who have just come to the country. And But that's still um, beginner courses, right? Yes. And you've chosen something which is very different and which um, there are just a few schools, uh, you know, that do that. So it's fascinating. And it's only yesterday that I, I was actually talking with somebody about positioning uh-huh. how important it is and uh yeah your positioning seems to be really great oh this that, point that, of time yeah that's reassuring thank you <laughs> yeah i think um that probably stems from um m- maybe knowing how important that is and my background is is peppered with marketing and promotions and i i, de- I definitely know that and as a writer i kind of know that the audience is the most important thing um we We've we've shifted a little bit from time to time as we're kind of like I, I love this analogy. Once I read of like everybody thinks a spaceship or a rocket rather goes like straight into space, but it's always like constantly adjusting, like little minute changes here and there. Thrusters, I guess, are moving things along, and we're doing that for sure. So while it might look really good on the surface, there are little things we're tweaking here and there to get even better. I think when it comes to marketing, one really great thing to do is to think of who is not your customer, right? Kind of who can you eliminate? And if you can speak as directly to uh, whomever you eventually settle on as being that person, then they're going to really hear uh, that tone of voice that you're directing towards them. Uh, It's the same thing with the material. Like some of our uh, things, um, when we teach a certain grammar point, we have to make sure that we are uh, directing the conversation to our students. So if they're intermediate students, we can't be talking about something very simple, right? We have to assume a certain sort of knowledge that they might have. And um, so everything plays a part in positioning. I'm glad to hear that you think it's working well. We think, um, we'd love to see this like play out in a classroom. So we're actually like looking to kind of network. If anybody in the room is aware of anybody uh, who might teach Japanese at a university level or teach, um, Japanese literature at a university level and would love to or would like rather to try this out in the classroom. That's kind of the next area that we're targeting people who are really kind of at an advanced level and who would love to plug into this. It's pretty cool way to learn Japanese. Like most people do uh, say to us like the refrain we hear is I wish I had learned Japanese like this. I think Tim even said that. Uh, when I was first introducing it to him. Yeah, yeah, I did. I And uh, when, when you're done, I did have a quick question, and then I'd like uh, to give you a chance. But uh, Sure, absolutely. Okay. absolutely. Um, yeah, I see there's another Yuka. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, people seem to like it. It's different, and it's using a text, and it's a nice way to kind of lock in. Like, my brain is easily distracted with language learning, and so focusing just on the story and kind of uh, teaching paragraph by paragraph uh, really helps kind of avoid this kind of like learning about elephants and cats and coffee and stuff that isn't so valuable um, and real sentences. And if you want to read Japanese and get good at writing Japanese, I don't really know of any other course like this. So it's pretty cool. It's fun. But let me, yeah, I'll stop there and please let other people talk. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So go No, ahead. no, you're doing fine. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just, I had some question, but my the first comment though is um, what I like about your program is your the stories. Um, because I, I was using different stories to improve when I was in college. My stories were Japanese comic storytelling. So it's not written, it's, it's verbal. And uh-huh. at the time, I was also studying kanji, but I knew that I wanted to learn vocabulary faster than I could learn enough kanji where reading would really help me. So I figured, well, why not listen? And mm-hmm. there were tapes available, and I found it extremely effective in increasing my vocabulary because I was learning words and phrases within the context of an interesting story told by a master Japanese storyteller. There's mm. no better person to emulate than a Rakugo speaker because they paint a picture in your head, okay? So yeah. you're using a different type of story, but I think all stories are effective. And you know, it just depends on which story you want, right? Um, so anyway, my hat's off because it's just really, I, I do like the way you explain vocabulary. I wish I had learned that way when I was in college. It wasn't nearly that crystal clear in terms of understanding the concepts, right? But my, when I was in that phase, I was motivated by 
friendships I had, a, a Japanese girlfriend who couldn't speak English, talking to her, and just the fact that I was living in Japan. So those were my motivations. And, and I'm interested in, you said that all the people who took this course are highly motivated. And I'm just curious, like, do you have stats in terms of like how many of them live in Japan? How many live in, in another country? And do you have a feel for what's motivating them? Is it purely professional or is there other dimensions? Yeah, uh, that's cool. So a couple of things there. So let, I'll tackle the motivation thing first and then go back to storytelling, which is definitely really, really cool and important, I think. Um, uh, yeah, the students who, uh, so uh, what was I going to say? So people in Japan, I think we only have one student in Japan at the moment. Um, is that right? Maybe two, we have two or three students in Japan. Um, that surprises me, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I wish we had more. There's certainly a huge number of people here who could benefit from it, I think. Um, but yeah, very few. And the one student who at least has been communicative to us as to why she's taking the course uh, said that she wants to uh, do, she wants to pass the JLPT2. And she's a JET uh, program person. So she's here teaching English and very, very, very busy. Um, but she's juggling a lot of things. And one of them is this JLPT too. Um, the other folks uh, are a mix of people who have, uh, uh, well, so I was going to say they're a mix of people who have a professional interest and a personal interest. But what, what we find is that those students who are, um, are taking the course to advance themselves professionally also have a very, very deep uh, love of the language and of literature in particular. And so uh, it's you know probably this passion for Japanese and for, for books has driven them to the point now where they're translating, right? And they're into the language uh, professionally because of their personal interest. Um, and so that's probably the makeup of the group of people I would see, I would say right now. Um, story, you mentioned, uh, yeah, like, so every lesson that we create is a story in and of itself, you know, based on this Dazai story. And um, when my wife first mentioned this idea of like learning Japanese or teaching Japanese rather, when we were talking about it, you know, Japanese has not been easy for me to learn. And I think in part, other than being busy and all the other crap that people have to deal with in life as an adult and trying to learn a language is not, never easy. I've always thought that the way I learn is different than the way languages are often taught. So. I am maybe like you, Tim, I'm very, very, uh, audit I'm an auditory learner and I'm very much a visual learner. I'm a musician like you are. And if I, everything I really run into, I always want to know, like, what does this sound like? And I thought like, if anybody's gone through this high sig, you know, remembering the kanji book, he's like so insane in there about don't try and learn how anything sounds. And I think that's the most idiotic approach ever and particularly for me because i have great like hearing and listening skills and i've been like handicapping myself i think for the past few years by not paying attention to it so we really do a lot of that in the course so reiko is my wife reiko is uh, always recording uh, quiz questions and passages from dazai the whole story is recorded in both languages and so people can hear these things over and over and over again. We created an Anki deck, which is a flashcard deck that maybe some people might be familiar with. And on the deck is both of our pronunciations of all of the words in the text. There's like 507 uh, N, up to N4, or excuse me, up to N1 kanji in this story alone. And we vocalize everything. Uh, so hearing it and um, learning from a great master storyteller, like you suggest, Tim, is uh, all part of the game. And... Uh, yeah, we're really excited about it. And uh, thanks for the compliments. Yeah. Oh, no, thank you very much. And I guess just one more follow up question, and then I'll, I'll, I'll back out here. Surely. Um, so when, I, again, I, as I mentioned, I was a little bit surprised that only one or two people are actually in Japan because, you know, again, it t takes a tremendous amount of motivation to study a foreign language when you're not in that country, right? And I was thinking about this, and I'd, I'd be interested in hearing Maya's point of view. We had another speaker on Manabu Goto, and he's started an online business where he's connecting um, retired Japanese with foreigners who want a friend, who want to be able to talk to somebody. And I, I wonder if there's a, v any value in at least considering maybe putting together a, a book club, a Japanese book club, where you could connect, maybe hook up with Manabu and connect Japanese who would 
be willing to go into a room or, you know, like a Zoom session and, and discuss a certain book or a certain passage just so people get a chance to connect with a human being, a Japanese human being, and they're overseas, so they might not have access. I'm just wondering, this is maybe not, but this is kind of how my, my mind works. Any value in considering that? Yeah, no, that's a killer idea. I love that. Um, I, I don't know if this person you're referring to has this app where you can kind of talk with uh, elderly people in Japan. There's an app like that, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, but yeah, that's a great idea. So we've actually thought that at some point in time, maybe in a year or so, we can flip slightly the model of teaching Japanese and uh, use it to teach people English as well. Because if you're a Japanese uh, citizen or a Japanese person and you already know the stories, you already know all this language that's being thrown at you, hearing me talk in English all the time is beneficial. And uh, the community that we have developed on, we use Discord for our community, has like rooms like you're talking about. So you can jump into a room with somebody and have a, uh, a conversation on a video and or just with sound like this. And that would be tremendous. Uh, that would be really, 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 really cool for everybody involved. My mom, when I first told my mom about this, she thought it sounded like a book club. So your idea is perfect, I think. <laughs> Maya, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah, I cannot agree more about this because, uh, uh, well, personally, when I was, for example, yeah, English is not my native language. So I learned English before I ever got out of uh, Bulgaria. And, um, yeah, it was really important for me to, you know, to, to talk with the teachers in person and then also um, talk with my classmates and any other person who was a native English speaker there, you know, uh, in Bulgaria. So I could gain this experience and also develop the skill. And I think that, yeah, this is really motivating. It was very motivating for me to, to meet people who use the language, English language. Um, and then we could connect and talk about different things, actually. And then with the Japanese, yeah. I think my Japanese, you know, learning Japanese is a very different story anyway, and it has been an ongoing story, uh, and it's probably something which I'm going to, to do for the rest of my life, I mean, learning Japanese. But yes, um, connecting with people is, for me personally, the best and the most important part, uh, and um, the most important part of learning the language, actually. So I can say, yes, Doc, that's, if you can do that, it's really something which will bring you more, more people. I believe. Mm -hmm. Maya, can you explain better than I did just briefly what Manabu is doing so Doc better understands? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let me do that. So um, Manabu, um, he decided that there was um, an opportunity uh, to create, um, you know, an online platform where uh, elderly Japanese and uh, foreigners who want to live and work in Japan are, or who are already here, where they can connect. The idea was that those foreigners, they have uh, little understanding of the Japanese culture. They don't speak the language very well, if at all. So Manabu thought that uh, by connecting um, those Japanese who live here in Japan, of course, they are native, uh, native Japanese people, with the foreigners who are interested in, in uh, Japan as a place to live and work in, uh, so he could actually help both sides achieve different goals. Basically... Um, it is, you know, for the foreigners who do this, they um, uh, they can learn about Japan, its people, its culture, its language. And uh, the, the Japanese who get involved in this, they can learn more about people coming from different cultures and they can learn more about those cultures, which in turn, um, well, helps the, you know, the people here get over their biases towards the foreigners. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes, it's really interesting. It seems to, well, it has been difficult, actually. Uh, Manabu was very um, articulate when he was talking about all the difficulties uh, he went through and uh, how uh, still there are a lot of challenges. But it turns out that uh, his model works, that business model works on so many levels because um, he is uh, engaging mostly elderly Japanese here. And you know that that demographic is uh, the demographic with the, the strongest biases towards foreigners in Japan. But also they're the, the demographic that feels um, the loneliest because their families, oh, okay, their kids have left home, their kids have already their families work and so on, they're busy. And those elderly people, they have a lot of time on their hands and they need to socialize. They need um, to be stimulated, um, you know, when they communicate not only with their fellow Japanese, but also with other you know, national people from other nationalities. So it's a fascinating model. And uh, yeah, it, it seems to, to, to have, uh, you know, 
uh, gotten the attention of uh, some governmental agencies as well, because it, it, it looks like uh, those, I mean, the stimuli, which, uh, you know, the program provides to the elderly Japanese actually help with um, their brain health as well. So, uh, yeah, I was just going to add, it adds meaning to their lives, yeah. it gives them a meaningful way yes. to live their lives, you know, even if a little bit. And so basically it's adding value to both sides. Both sides are enriching. And I, I just love the idea. So I would like to connect you with uh, Manaba. We can maybe set something up offline on LinkedIn and sure. uh, we'll, we'll discuss it if you're yeah. interested. Yeah, that would be awesome. I, it sounds very, what's the name of the company? It sounds like the company I've, I've maybe seen. Sale. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. I have heard of it. Yeah, it looks amazing. And for all the reasons that you've stated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, super, super cool. What a neat little idea. Yes, it is cool indeed. And the, well, probably the most fascinating thing to me is that the person who came up with that idea is just a young guy. He's still in his 20s, not 30 years old yet, you know. And uh, <laughs> well, this is amazing. Just, That's right. yes. and, and his motivation, and, and it's very, he's very sincere to contribute to society, but making a profit is part of that calculation. But I love that, you know, if society benefits, then you will be rewarded is kind of how I look at it. If you yes. add value, uh, naturally you will succeed, uh, of course, depending on your efforts and things like that. But uh, so that's why I found Manabu very, very inspiring. So, yeah, that's very, very cool. And by the way, I feel so sorry. Yuka, you've been on stage patiently waiting. Please. I know. Patience, patience is my middle name. <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway. Hi, dog. Uh, dog, just so you know that I am not patient at all. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I have ADHD. Right. So, you know, that's kind of my excuse. So I have tons of questions. But before, um, and I have two major ones, but then uh, the... The, before that, though, I like to add to the Manabu story, the way that I, I understood his business model, I thought that because I was uh, in this room when he was a uh, guest speaker, um, I asked him that how he is spreading his words, right? Just because he, he has the best program in the world, but you know, people have to be aware. People have to, be know, people have to know his service exists. I and mean, he said, if I'm not mistaken, he has some like a partnership with major insurance companies. And then, you know, the, the elderly or, you know, the, when you grow older, you need more uh, the insurance or like a medical services. So I think that those insurance company may be sort of, you know, promoting his service on his behalf. So I thought that's, that's the great way. I and mean, that, you know, that was very clever of him. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so he's employing a channel, right? So channel yeah, 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 yeah. So very, very smart. Yeah. So let me ask you the, my first question. The second question, let me think because you know I often ask questions which I regret, and then I ended up sending. I'm so sorry for asking that <laughs> question to Maya and Maya and Tim later, and then they were so great. They, you know, they're so nice, and I said, "Oh, it was okay." They always say, but sure. and then I keep repeating same mistake. But anyway, my first question. Yeah. You know, um. So I I'm just staring at on YouTube, and then you know I see this. Uh, your program, the Dazai version. And then I'm just like, this is not the easiest novel. Um, and then I'm just, you know, like, you know, this this lesson is like a mono. And it's a great way that you guys are teaching. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but uh, my, my question is, you know, is this like a father into the lesson, right? This cannot be the very first for the beginner, right? Uh, which which uh, episode are you looking yeah, at? Yeah, like, like a mo mono, like a Dazai or oh, something. Mono. Like mono, yeah. And because, yeah, the mono can be people, mono can be things. And I think, I, you know, I only caught the uh -huh. very beginning. So, uh -huh. like, is this like a sort of typical lesson that you guys are uh, providing people with? Uh, yeah, I would say typical. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, hmm. Yes, I think so. The idea is to share these not so easy things, right? So, hmm. as, you, as you mentioned, it, it can be interpreted many different ways. And so... What, what happens as a learner, I'm probably not, I'm stating the obvious here maybe, but when you don't recognize a word, you go to the dictionary, right? And then yes. you see, oh, a mono means things. And then you look at the context of the sentence and you think, well, shit, that doesn't make any sense at all. And so what the hell does it really mean? And so we try to kind of shine this spotlight on, uh, on, on the usage of the phrase or the word or whatever the heck it is we're focusing on so that people can understand really what's being said and so i'm looking at the yeah so that's episode 25 so that's okay hmm. that's deep it's deeper into the story but mm, it's um the degree of 
teaching that we're offering is, I think, the same across all the modules. So okay. usually a complicated thing, and that's why we're focusing on it. Um, I think the very first thing we talked about is Toyu, which is a little too simple for most of our learners. But for me, it was new. <laughs> so it all depends on what my wife kind of ferrets out and wants to pay attention to. She's the word detective. I just talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I can see you're talking. Uh, so, so this is your differentiation, right? So this is the, so I'm just trying to understand the, what's unique about your lesson, your business, your teaching, which is based on a story, and then you are picking the the phrases, you know, the which people tend to use. You need to know to communicate. Is that a, your differentiation part? I think the biggest differentiation is we're translators, right? So we're teaching Japanese and we're actually literature translators. That's our thing. And then on top of that, you have the idea that we're focusing on a single story from start to finish. And that as we go through that story, we um, illuminate different uh, aspects of the story that we think uh, a reader or a learner might benefit from knowing. And that they could then apply in their world, either reading Japanese or speaking Japanese. So these are kind of the, the differentiators. And then the all of the like features that we pack into this thing is is what makes it even more cool, right? So so for example, like if you want to study uh, Japanese using a Genki book, um, maybe you create your own flashcards, uh, but we do all of that for you. And we do it for you with native pronunciation and English pronunciation, right? So all of the features, the, the listening to my wife talk, the uh, we have this thing called Airtable that we use, which is fantastic for like just kind of quickly going through vocabulary, bah, 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 kind of drills. Um, all of that sort of stuff is just like icing on the cake. Access to us so students can ask us questions. We have the community, the Discord community. None of this stuff is like, if I wanted to talk with my teacher when I was learning Japanese here when I first came to Kobe, if I wanted to like have a session with my teacher, I'd have to pay $50 an hour for that privilege. Here, people are paying $350 as of now for like a whole almost year's worth of access to us and all the other stuff thrown in. It's insane value. Uh, and that is also a differentiator. I, I'm sure everybody in this room who's studied Japanese has spent at least $1,000 on books. You're getting all of that and more with just this one course. <laughs> yeah, I think I might have spent more <clears throat> trying to learn English. But yeah, but uh, um, hmm. so my second question, I think it's maybe, you know, like, a, like a English as a foreign language is different from Japanese as a foreign language because, um, you know, when I, because I still think I lip read. You know what I'm just trying to say? But unfortunately, yes, I, I am reading lips when I listen to people. That's why when I watch, you know, the Disney animes, you know, those are the, not the humans are speaking. I cannot see their mouth moving. Interesting. Yeah. And then I, you know, I have a hard time understanding sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then when the people speak to me behind my back, I have a hard time understanding them. So sure. that's why I'm at, so the, 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 what I'm trying to get at is like uh, in, in Japanese, people, you don't have to hear a real person speak? Oh, you went mute, but uh, my question ended here. <laughs> Only because I've got cars running around my neighborhood. Sorry about that. Oh, 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 so, okay. But the last thing you were saying, though, can you repeat the last yeah, thing? Yeah, so that? Like, uh, you are, so people can, okay, I can, I can see people can hear you on your, you know, on the screen, but they're not watching you how to pronounce this, these Japanese words, right? Yes, that's correct. Um, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm usually I'm not actually even pronouncing the Japanese words. In the beginning, we would do this thing where I would kind of walk through the sentence uh, and, and pronounce some of the words. But I, we thought we felt uh, that wasn't entirely necessary. And some <laughs> and sometimes I sound more like I'm I'm speaking Japanese as an Italian person. So uh, we, we opted to, uh, to to get a little bit away from that. So my wife does all the native pronunciation in different areas of the course but you bring up an interesting point um and it's fascinating when we think about this as educators is uh you know how do people learn right and so i never thought that people are learning the language by looking at someone's lips move but uh i'm sure many many people learn in the same way we um we don't really have plans for 
putting anybody on cam- I'm comfortable in front of the camera, but uh, my wife, uh, as Tim knows, and Maya knows, uh, is happy with her nose in the dictionary rather than in front of a camera. So I think uh, maybe you, do you want to be our, our talking head? And you can <laughs> you can <laughs> say everything in Japanese and we'll put the camera on you. But Are you no, talking no- to me? You're talking to yeah. me? Yes, no, just, I, I, no, I never go to the in front of the camera because I don't <laughs> want to do my hair just for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't have to worry about that myself. Yeah. The hair problem is fine. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, no plans for talking heads. I think a, a lot of the learning that we, uh, I think our people really enjoy is written. So even though we have videos, we seem to then, we're identifying a little bit of a trend, it seems, with our students where they're actually preferring, probably not by surprise, to read instead. And um, so the videos work and they're good kind of like introductory um, components to a lesson, but the real learning and the deep dive comes from the workbook material and all of the other things that we provide. That's what we think, at least. Okay, thank you. And then this is a, a question that I, which I think I may regret asking, but uh, <laughs> I, I have to, I have to ask. Go ahead. Uh, so you said that you're still doing translation, right? Yes. Okay. So what type of translation? Because you know, because. Okay, so you know that these days, like a uh, you know, like even the Zoom and the meeting, like uh, those meeting app, they provide a lot of translation. The system can, and you know, like uh, in the, when AI become more sophisticated and when AI keep learning the machine learnings. Um, so, but I hope that you know that AI will not replace humans entirely. So, in your mind, what humans can do which AI cannot do? Uh, wow. Okay. Um, many things. And I've played around with AI too, uh, AI as well, uh, because it's interesting. And as a writer, uh, you know, I, I hear about this threat from AI as well. But I don't, um, I don't feel that it's as you as unique a threat or as impending a threat as people like to make it out to be. Uh, it still has a long way to go. It's it seems to have a, a good use case in writing that's not um, uh, as human, if you will, as as deep, as intellectual, as connected to the other things that make writing sing in a way. So a computer and the AI tools that I've used um, can kind of get there. They're good for um, creating outlines, I've found, of basic kinds of online article text, right? But I, I spend more time editing them and trying to massage them into something useful than they're usually worth. And as far as literature goes, I mean, I, I don't really consider them a threat, at least not in my lifetime. I'm not uh, a teenager. Uh, so I don't really, I'm not concerned about AI taking away our, our livelihood um, as writers or as translators. Are you, do you think that they're that much of a threat? You- uh, I think because I use like you know a lot of uh, uh, translation program. I mean, go- even Google Translator mm-hmm. was horrible two years ago, but mm-hmm. you know they're making a good progress, especially for like a, you know like a science data. Because I'm in the business, for the business like a report, you know they do a good job. But like you said, there's there's some like a literature like a deep down, especially for Dazai type of uh, writing, you know, AI may have a hard time sort of, you know, because sometimes translate translators need to read between lines, right? Especially Japanese can say things without saying, you know, so Absolutely. yeah, for that case, I think it's humans can still have an upper hands. But I think uh, Frank has an interesting question. So Maya, you, 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 do you want to address that? Yes, yes. Thank you, Yuka. Uh, Frank's question is really interesting. So uh, Frank wrote, love the whole concept, but would be more interested if if it is based on contemporary literature. Have you considered that? Yeah, interesting. Uh, yes, we have. And we've, uh, we have, um, why have we not done that? So we like the old stories, uh, but we also like the new stories. The trickiest part with new stories is publishing. So rights is a big, hairy beast. And um, we've had um, conversations with a couple of the, the bigger publishing companies in the past with, with, uh, one, uh, with regard to one author who uh, died not so long ago, Tanabe Seiko, and um, with uh, Ogawa Yoko's publishers as well. And so she's alive and she's done really well. And we, we wanted to, for example, we wanted to, uh, we had translated this little, um, I guess, 
essay or little essay uh, that uh, that Yoko had written about a dog, her dog. And we found it very beautiful and we translated it into English. And we wanted to just share it with our mailing list, uh, which is a couple hundred people at the time. Maybe it was only 200 people or so at the time. And we reached out to the publisher and said, hey, can we, do we have your permission to do this? Would it be okay? And, you know, they, uh, they weren't too hot on the idea, basically, um, because of future opportunities. So publishing companies here in Japan are, are at least in our conversation so far, really wanting to keep uh, the translating door open for bigger projects, right? And the same was true with Tanabe Seiko. So my wife uh, had a conversation with uh, ta- with her niece, I believe, and she had an email exchange actually with Ogawa Yoko. So we're able to get to the authors and have these sorts of conversations, um, but the publishing company brings down the hammer and uh, prevents us from really doing anything. The only thing we have done, um, and this is, I'm speaking just strictly about translating as opposed to using these materials in course form, which is a great idea and and is something we've certainly thought about. Um, but we did have luck, um, maybe two years ago, there's a, a science fiction writer, um, Fujitayo, who we were having some conversations with on Twitter. And um, my wife uh, somehow picked up the book or whatever. And we asked him, hey, can we do a little passage from your book and translate it? And he was totally game for it. And he said, fine. Usually, if you get the author's permission, everything's fine. But in these other cases where we were dealing with perhaps larger names, uh, it would it was a lot more uh, difficult. And we didn't really get anywhere other than being able to email for having Reiko to email her idol is like probably one of the coolest things that happened to her that year, I think. But uh, no progress on the other front. Uh, but Frank, if you know any writers, contemporary writers, who would be game for this and can help us uh, barrel through a publishing company, then yeah, we'd love to do that sort of thing. And it would have to be a short story too. That's the other thing. Like this is such a an expansive operation. Like we could never create a course around a novel. We'd be dead before it was finished probably. And our students would be bored to death. <laughs> but, but did you say Tanabe Seiko died? Tanabe Seiko. Yeah, she died, uh, so, I don't know how many years ago, several years ago. Yes. Oh, really? she was, I didn't know that. Too bad. Okay. Quite old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good question, Frank. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Frank, for that. Uh, well, one of the uh, goals of this room is uh, to get uh, people, you know, with some ideas and also questions, of course. So, and if everybody in the room can benefit from them, uh, well, we're happy. Uh, it means, yes, uh, indeed. Yeah. So, thank you, um, thank you, Frank and Yuka. So, I put it in uh, the room chat, but please don't worry. We love you. We love your mm-hmm. questions, and they are always revealing and very um, enlightening. So please don't worry about them, okay? Just go ahead and ask them. Thank you. Because sometimes I, I feel like I'm raining on, you know, one's party, so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, not at all. Yeah, all questions are good. I mean, I, I'm of the same ilk. Yeah, everything is good. Don't worry. I can take it. I'm from New Jersey. No problem. Tim, oh, I, thought, I thought you were from Chicago. Oh, okay. Hmm. Now, Tim, I, I lived in Chicago many, many years, but I'm from New Jersey originally. So Chicago, uh, you know, thick skin and New Jersey thick skin, you, you can't offend me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I had a, just some comments about AI and translation. And first of all, I'm not by profession a translator, but anybody who's worked in a Japanese company who speaks the language will eventually be asked to do it now and then. So, um, so I have, you know, some experience, but my background just happens to be management and manufacturing. So last year I was approached by a friend, kind of an ex colleague, and uh, we used to work in the same company and he needed a big program translated um, from Japanese into English. So I was going to turn it down because it's not really what I enjoy doing, but he talked me into it (laughs) and uh, because it's my background. So it's something I'm qualified to do. And I was introduced to computer assisted translation software, which basically allows you to take an entire passage and roll it into the program and it breaks it up into different chunks in these like little cells, almost like an Excel, you know, on a spreadsheet, a cell, right? And then you can hook to, I hooked to DeepL, which I found much better than Google Translate, at least from my point of view. On the one hand, I was extremely impressed by it, but it was far from perfect. But it saved me so much time because it did look up a lot of words or maybe kanji I had forgotten. So I didn't have to spend my time going to a dictionary, looking it up, you know, and, but I still 
spent a lot of time massaging it. So the way I see AI, at least now in the current stage, it's a fantastic tool to make the translation task much more efficient, but it is so far from where it needs to be. And I'll tell you why. I had direct access to the guy who wrote the program in Japanese. And I would, because he was a friend, I would go through the entire thing with him. And he would tell me, you know, no, that's not what I meant. And then he goes, actually, my Japanese is terrible on this. I need to rewrite it. And AI will never be able to do that. AI will never be able to to read between the lines and say, this is what's being said on the surface, but this is the intended meaning because there's always going to be a gap because we can never put everything into perfect language to express our feelings. And so there has to be at some levels, some interpretation of the words. So anyway, that's my, that was my, you know, experience with AI. Yeah, I guess you know, AI and humans can coexist, uh, but I don't mean to, you know, like a, you know, that was my intention that a human translators or interpreters will will be replaced. But, yeah, uh, but you know, in a in a long, long, long run, and actually, you know, especially when we, you know, getting into the world of metaverse, which you know we know it's going to be far away uh, at the current technologies. Uh, I think it may opens up a lot of you know the opportunities for people who you know who that cannot afford the translators or interpreters. So, you know, I think my point is, I love to see humans can peacefully coexist with the AIs. I just, but I also, I wanted to get the realistic view on like, you know, where these technologies are at this point. Because sometimes, you know, like when, when, when I talk to the AI engineers, they tend to, you know, depict the rosier pictures. That's why I wanted to sort of like ask, you know, the someone like Doc who are in the business, you know, wanted to get some realistic view. So thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Because we're, we're on the same page. I, I would just say for me, from my point of view, I am extremely grateful for AI as a tool because it, I translated that, those, that huge program about five times faster than I thought I would. And and that's actually a conservative estimate. Yeah, yeah no doubt. I mean, th there's an application uh, for this stuff. And I, I mean, we are just in creating uh, subtitles, for example. So we have a student who um, specifically asked for English subtitles on our videos because he has an, an auditory um, learning issue. And so I, I create uh, subtitles for each one of these videos. And the editing, so I, if on average our videos are about seven minutes long, and um, it takes me about an hour to edit the the translation that Google provides. Uh, uh, translation is not the right word. The in, the creation of the subtitling that Google creates uh, takes me an hour to edit that with all of the correct you know quote marks and ellipses and capitalization and putting Japanese in there and all that stuff. Uh, but if I were to have to do it on my own from a, an audio transcript like like you're talking about, Tim, it would take me forever and I would hate it. It's already a chore that I really don't really enjoy doing. Um, but I do get to learn because I'm listening to my wife's voice over and over and over and over again as they do these sorts of things. So there's there's no doubt a um, uh, a benefit that we get now from AI and that we will continue to get. And once they, once the, um, once AI is a tool and as the industry matures and they start to plug in more of these kind of, um, people who are, um, providing, uh, you know, their own emotional input into the creation of these tools. Um, because from what I've learned over the, the past few years, that's really going to be what's important. I don't, there's a name for this type of person, um, where you kind of teach the robots, if you will, to be more, um, more uh, to ex have empathy and these sorts of things. Once that starts to get into the code, into the way we interact with actual physical robots, then things will really be a lot different and we'll, we'll be having a different conversation, I presume. Uh, but for now, uh, things are as we've said. And, and the other thing that I think is worth uh, mentioning is that you know, the, the reason why we really do this, and so I mentioned at the very top of the call, Maya said, why are you getting into this? And why did you decide rather to create this course? And I said, I was trying to figure out ways to make money. That That's my answer. But if you were to ask my wife, and she would love to beat me over the head with this idea instead, is that we do this because she wants people to love the stories and to enjoy the stories. 
that is her whole focus. And so um, likewise, learning, uh, you know, using AI to translate Dazai would be like the last thing on earth my wife would ever consider doing, right? Because she gets immense pleasure from digging through the pile of dictionaries on her desk and learning more about her language so that she can like totally geek out on a word and, and share that with me and then see my excitement over it. And there's pleasure in learning and in translating and in reading that um, we wouldn't want to surrender to AI or a computer, even if we could, at least us, you know, this is, you know, you make a shoe because you love to make shoes, not because you can, uh, because that's it. Now you love to do it. You know, we probably could hire robots to cook for us and everything, but that's not so fun, right? I want to make my own Chicago deep dish pizza on the stove, Tim. I don't need to have uh, the SoftBank robot do it for me. <laughs> Please teach me how to do that because I am craving for Chicago deep dish pizza. <laughs> okay, I can get you pretty close, but this isn't Gino's for sure. <laughs> You mean you, you, they don't have a the Chicago pizza house in Tokyo? I thought the Tokyo uh, has everything. I, I've, I've tried some. I think I had a pretty good pie. But, man, the, the real McCoy, it was invented in Chicago. And that's I'm a Chicago boy, so I'm, I'm kind of... Yeah, I'm with you on that. Well, I think it's... Oh, somebody's okay agreeing with you. <laughs> I am, yes. Well, I have no idea what that Chicago pizza or the other dishes you're talking about are. Because I have never tried them, but hopefully at some point of time we'll get together and uh, probably somebody, some, one of you, can make them, you know, for everybody <laughs> who doesn't have the experience. Doc, you know? uh, that's a great idea. Doc, we need to get a group together, maybe people who come to this room, and maybe rent out a place and have a Chicago deep dish pizza party. That could... <laughs> there you go. I love that idea. <laughs> and some Nihonshu on the side. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and of course, uh, some other drinks as well. Maybe, I don't know, Amazake. <laughs> Ah. wine and whatever else you know my wife's so, favorite yeah. yes <laughs> great oh that's a great idea so let's work and see how we can realize it there you go we'll we'll figure out a way once uh, the world yeah. <laughs> definitely well so it's uh four minutes past nine o'clock we usually uh, finish at around nine o'clock uh, and uh, let everybody go so thank you very much everybody for joining us doc thank you very much for being our speaker yeah. today Ex excellent been... room doc i really really enjoyed it and I, oh. thank you everybody you got everybody for the questions and timothy for coming as well thank you yes thank you my pleasure thanks for having us see ya thank you please come back <laughs> Okay. Cheers. Thank yes. you for all the questions, everybody. I do appreciate it. Yeah. So a lot of uh, good ideas are born through discussion and uh, answering questions. So I hope, Doc, that this room has uh, helped you uh, find some more ideas. Uh, hopefully you'll come back and, um, you know, be a speaker again here at some point in the near future. So please think about it. We would like, uh, we would love to see your wife in the audience as well. Uh, we're not <laughs> going to put, you know, uh, pressure on her to come and speak but uh, yes if she is willing to join us uh, here she's very welcome so thank you very much indeed and uh, well so if you have any any words in conclusion please go ahead uh yeah no i think um just uh, you know additional words of thanks for having me would be great um i would you know hopefully people keep reading books read good books read banned books read everything uh, that you can get your hands on. And if it makes you feel any more comfortable, my wife is here, but she's just quiet. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you very much for joining. Then I, I apologize well, for you. not realizing yeah, and, that. And thing. a shout out to Doc's better half. Yes, it yes. is. <laughs> <laughs> now no, she's no. all back. Yes. What, is the, what is your next book? Uh, the, the next book after this one, after Susan? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if we've necessarily decided yet. We oh, don't, okay. We're so deep in the weeds on Dazai right now, oh, but we have... Okay. We have considered a contemporary writer. We'd love to do something from somebody new, but we haven't uh, decided yet. My wife loves Yaeko, uh, Nogami Yaeko, so we may do her. Okay. We'd like to do a female writer if possible. Cool. Thank you. You betcha. All right. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Thank you. I hope that uh, you have a great day and uh, a great weekend after that. So, And we're looking forward to having you again. Thank you. Likewise. Bye-bye now. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you for coming and staying with us today. We will be on air next week on Thursday at 8 a.m. Japan time, time again. So join us. Until then, you can find us at japanexpertinsights.com and our YouTube channel, where we upload all the conversations on Japanese politics, business insights, and the role of Japan in the Indo-Pacific region. 
If you want to stay informed about our upcoming events, you can follow us on Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Again, we're looking forward to your joining us next week. Until then, stay well and make the best of the day. See you.